So, Sanjoy, meanwhile, people are taking the poll. I would mm. also like to inform that today with Sanjoy, we have Dr. Ankur Sodi with us, who is the AVP for the Career Services team at Hero Wire. And he will be here and he will be helping you out with all your career and placement related queries. So, during this webinar, in case you would like to know more about the placements or the career opportunities that are available, Ankur Sodi will be the right person. You can put down all your questions and queries in the Q&A section and not in the chat box because in the chat box, it might get skipped. So, I guess without any further ado, I would like to hand over this webinar to Sanjoy. Mm -hmm. Hey, hi. Uh, so, so as I said, like we are going to have this conversation that uh, it's, it's fantasy apps or the the thing that is happening if you look at uh, uh, you know today of the of the data so there are uh, there's been 200 to 34 percent growth in people using fantasy apps so that's why fantasy apps and we are we are just people are saying and what the experts are saying we're just at the tipping point of it we are not even reached with uh we didn't identify you know, us as that we have been using the full capacity of it there is a lot of market where the growth can happen because right now in India specifically the fantasy app is is very much concentrated towards cricket. There there is a scope for uh, for football. There are scopes for other sports coming in. So before even getting into the start start this particular program uh, start this particular webinar, we're going to discuss that how and and you know what is the approach that we should take to build a fantasy sports app and what are the problems that we face right or the what are the different challenges that we that that fantasy you know when you're creating an A to Z. When you're creating a fantasy sports app like a dream eleven or, or, or you know, a quick circle or something, that what are the challenges that a solution architect or what are the challenges you're trying to develop would come in? So before starting that, can you? Uh, I would like to understand one thing: uh, how many people can you please write in your Q and A? Uh, so you know, how many people have actually used a fantasy app? And if you have used something, uh, if you know of something, can you please write the name of it as well? Okay, Raj has used Dream Eleven. Anyone else? Okay, can you write the name the the fantasy apps that are used in, in the chat? MPL. Okay, interesting. The trick. Okay, F1 fantasy. Interesting. Dream Eleven, F1 fantasy, Game Z. Okay, so all of this particular app, all the apps that we talk about, actually have the similar kind of architecture and a similar kind of structure that they work with. Similar kind of, very very similar kind of tech stack. So in this particular webinar, so we'll try to build that app in in a completely you know uh, uh, a blank. We're going to take a blank draw in, and then kind of try to build that. What are the challenges that we face, and how do we solve that particular problem? Now, a very interesting as we go along, we'll talk about what are the different interesting kind of case studies that happens specifically in fantasy sports app because this has interestingly very interesting scalability problems. Uh, that that hath happens with a Dream Eleven app or a, again a Game Z app or an MPL app. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll just open up my um, Dr.io and then uh, move the session forward from there. Can you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, guys, can you? At the moment, is is my screen visible? Yes, enjoy. I can see so, your screen. So whenever whenever you're building this fantasy app, there are two different specific challenges that you're going to build, right? First challenge is on the ecosystem part, that how do you build an ecosystem? How do you build a full stack application? And the second part is on the scaling part. How do you deploy that into different servers? Because again, when you talk about a fantasy app, we are talking about something which is very, 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 very heavy on perspective of deployment. There are so many users that will be using something like a fantasy app, right? So again, as I said, that we are going to build this fantasy app together in the class or in this particular webinar. We're going to take 35, 40 minutes to build this whole piece. And I want this piece to be very, very interactive. Right? I, there must be some of you would know a little bit about coding. Would be some of you coming to the coming to the whole webinar with, with a bit of understanding of how a full stack application is being developed and all of this piece. So let's let's try to make it very, very interactive. And as well as informative, so I come with an experience of building uh, apps for where the you know, large scale application have been built up for for coming with B2C apps, creating B2C apps or e-commerce apps. And you know, in that e-commerce app, we added a lot of components of fantasy app, the way fantasy apps work. Um, 
we will be we will be building that together in this particular webinar so just reiterating the same thing again i've been looking at a lot of inputs coming from you where we're going to talk about the uh, how the you know how 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 the fantasy have been created and also look at what are the problems that that needs to be solved now let's take a couple of problems the first problem that you're going to take is on the how to build this whole piece of ecosystem okay. So let's let's see that how our fantasy app works. Let's take an example of again a dream eleven, right? So in your fantasy app, we have three ma major systems, right? One in one is if we talk about a user here, so one is probably a browser, right? Where the lot of people actually do their browsers through 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 a specific browsers. Then we have say we have certain mobile apps. So it may be an Android app, and then then we have iOS apps. So let's start and let's start our case study of creating things from the browser, and then we can extend this whole ecosystem to an Android app and iOS app. So let's simply create that. You know how actually you know our system works. So a particular user. Would be logging into a browser of a fantasy app or doing sign in and sign up. Then that, but within that browser, he would be able to see and play games. There would be, there would be different contests that would be there, and this different contest would be they would be able to enroll and make some payments and all of these things happen. Now, usually in any of the full stack applications, so in in a fantasy app where you're developing, it's basically a full stack application. Usually, in any of the full stack application, there are two kind of servers that exist, right? one is what we call if we put it this is as a front end server and another piece is when you talk about a back end server and all of this data data of contest data of your user data of what are the different teams and within that team there are different players and different points all of this has been pushed into a a database which is which is a database right? so now there are two or three things to be considered now this particular browser within the browser it sent a request to my front end server now this front end server is, is just a request this particular front end server Processes something, processes request, and sends a response back to the browser. Right? This is this is a response back to the browser, which response is basically nothing but my HTML, CSS, and kind of a JS file, which is the response is getting back to the browser. Now, this HTML, CSS, and JS is what we are seeing in front of us when you are trying to get into the browser. Now, where exactly the data that is coming to the front end server, the HTML, CSS, and JS that you're seeing would be looking at a lot of themes, a lot of a lot of different values that is going to come in, a lot of different images that is going to come in, a lot of contests that's going to come in. So these contests, as I said, are pushed into this particular database. So that means this front end server, in some way, is is connected to this this piece of database. Whatever language it has been there, this is a typical way of what we call what we are creating here is is called we we were creating something as a monolithic architecture where there is one single application, one single server which is sending a request to the browser and it is also connecting to the database. Usually, these are the applications, these are the technology that people used to do it before, like in two like early two thousands. When all of this were being done in PHP or a lot of in Python, Django. But as I said, these are full stack application. Need to build in a scale. Need to a lot of complex logic. This is not the way a Dream Eleven or a Quick Circle has been created. What happens here? This particular front end server sends a request to the back end server. Request. In a format in JSON, this particular backend server then process for processing the request as basically connecting to this database. 
and then it's sending the data back to my front end server right this is what is happening so here you have a you have a json that's going in that's been created in the back end server so this is the problem statement that we are solving for a simple browser so you have a browser where your avenant user is logging into a dream 11 or such kind of a piece we are logging into that browser send a request to my front end server then that front end server understood the request sends another request to my back end server to get the data right you need to get the data for the contest for the teams for for different games that is available that back end server then sends that data to database where all my data for contest my teams my my your user data is there creates the send the response back to the front end server this front end server once they have get the response creates the html from the response sends it back to the browser what in front of you you are seeing okay this is a typical structure of any service based architecture so any of the application that we're running today again it's a typical fsd application a full stack application this is a typical structure what is happening so what are the different technologies that usually a front end server uses can you guys write what are the different technologies that usually people use what are the different technologies being used in front end server guys guys i know you guys know right just can you write what are the different technologies that you'll be using in front end server okay people are writing react absolutely right what else guys apart from react okay react angular so yeah the front end server where where applications which are building the html right so we have react we have angular we, we might have vue and we might have vanilla jss as well right vanilla js as well now in the backend server can you guys tell me what are the different technologies in backend servers we use guys what are the different technologies node.js yes node perfect very nice what else we use something like spring boot sometimes we use django as well and maybe flask databases guys what kind of databases we use lovely flask absolutely right what kind of databases can we use what are the different kind of databases we can use there can be two kinds of databases that i think most of you would know yes absolutely one is sql another one is no sql this is nice so now i will talk about once we understood and once we solved the problem of ecosystem on a piece of scalability that what are the technologies that we should be choosing while looking at and building this thing so there are different options that is available to us so we'll talk about what are the different technologies that we're going to choose and what are the things that are going to drive us and choosing those technology and what are the usually the tech stack that is used for creating this kind of gamified application this kind of gaming fantasy gaming applications so let's complete this whole diagram right so what happens when you're trying to do it in android so you have so the same user is basically connected to the android app android app then gets the data from the backend server the same concept that happens right then the same user in the same kind of system connects with the ios app and the same ios app connects with the back end server so this is the structure of any service level architecture so what happens if you see that a back end is existing of node django and or spring boot whatever where i'm making a change if a new functionality been added so only one place in the back end it is getting updated where it is connecting to your databases and the front end applications are basically connected to your back end tomorrow if dream 11 comes up and with a amazon fire stick application right if 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 say games he come up with a with a google tv application right so this can all of these applications will just be a front end application connected to your back end server so this piece becomes very very important 
Now, this is something I will take a pause here for a couple of minutes and we'll take some questions. Are you all of you are able to understand on the way architecture has been set up on a full stack piece? Is there any question till now? You can put down your questions either in the Q&A section or else the chat box is also open. So I'll take a couple of minutes because next the thing that we're going to discuss will be very specific to a gaming application and we're going to talk about what are the things that is that is required to build a scalable that kind of an application when, you, when you're trying to build those things. Any, any questions? If you guys have understood this, can you please write that? You're, yes, I've understood in the chat as well that you have followed this much and you have followed this much. Can you write that as well in the chat? Got it. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Now let's come to the fun part. Let's part to the come to the complex part of it. Now, once you are a full stack developer, you probably understand these things and you know, it all this thing has been laid out in front of you that I need to build a browser application. I need to build an Android app. I need to build an iOS app. Now there are, I need to build a front end server where I have three options, right? We have Tangular, View, and Vanilla JS. I have a back end server. I have a couple of options Node, Spring Boot, Django. Then, you know, I have databases of SQL and NoSQL. A lot of options I have. Now, what are the exact tech stack I'm going to use? And what is the approach that I need to solve a problem, right? That's that. How do I how do I solve that particular piece of problem? Now, how now the the first? Can you guys tell me what is the biggest problem for a for a, for an app for for an app like uh, Dream Eleven or or a My Eleven Circle? Can you guys give a hand? Like, what is the biggest problem that when you look at why Dream Eleven or or a My Eleven Circle? Or this kind of gaming apps have a very unique problem that that is that is that's not where anywhere. Well, Sanjay, I can see two of the questions in the Q and A section. Mercy, I'll answer to that. Yes, the Flutter and React Native are 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 basically hybrid apps where uh, you know the hybrid technologies where you can build the Android app and iOS app in one single application. So we usually in our courses, we teach either Flutter or React Native, which can be used as a technology here. So you can see there is a option of Flutter or React Native. So this is usually previously, we were using Kotlin or Swift for this, but now people are not using that. We're just using either a Flutter or React Native for creating the, uh, the Android app and the iOS app. Okay, these are cross platform, but uh, we do not use it. I think come, come back to your question here that uh, cross platform develop this type of application. If you look at cross platform, usually Flutter says that I will be able to create all the three platforms, but in production application, they don't do it. Usually the browser applications are built in React and the apps are built in either in Flutter or React. That's the way it usually works out, right? Scalability. In a scalability, there is a very specific problem that comes in. Can you guys tell me what, like, what is the problem? Do you, what is, can you guys guess that, which is very, very unique problem to a gaming app? Ruthvik is saying latency. No, latency is, is a problem all across. Latency is performance, scalability is a problem all across for a, for an e-commerce app. So I built an e-commerce app, which is, which should be able to address like two lakh users and, and there might be different transactions which is happening, but not that. Say, if you look at a Amex credit card system, right? So, so many users would be using that, so, so many transactions would be happening. Performance, scalability, latency, all of this are similar problems for any of the full stack application, any of the application that we're trying to build in backend. But as when you're trying to build a gaming kind of thing, there's a very specific problem that you need to solve. And, and we will be talk about that that very problem too, and then we'll see. Wow, this this is the way it's there. So the problem. Any anyone want to take another guess? I'll give another minute to you guys. People who have played around it, not maintaining. Maintaining again. These are very generic problems. We're going to talk about this, but in a very specific problem. Can you guys tell me? Okay. 
okay okay so what actually let's try to understand what actually happens in a dream 11 app or a or a circle app you when say there's a cricket match a test match it's going on between india and bangladesh no that's happening so now probably test match started day before yesterday right on sat was it was, did it started day before yesterday is the third day right day before yesterday or maybe before that so there's a match that would start the spike the spike of that request when exactly the most of the changes most of the time people log in can you guys tell me when you are running a cricket match when you are trying to build for a cricket match when is that moment when you have the most number of spike that would happen for a dream 11 app or a or a click circle app perfect just after the toss so what happens if you look at dream 11 data there is 100x usage increase of usage when just after the toss so after the toss in that 30 minutes period you have the highest number of users for that particular match and rest of the period the application is normal is that is that is that very interesting right everybody is following me here not during the match not during the match too much when you are looking at lot of people will be making changes in the app most number of updates that would be happening in that 30 minutes period when the toss happens and the match starts because after the match when a match starts it stops right so in a dream 11 application say we are trying to we are looking at a case study of you know see uh, india pakistan match most number of changes that would happen in an india pakistan india pakistan match would be on that 30 minutes period so everything here the usage the, it's a get users right so everywhere when you are looking at you know people are refreshing and looking at their points that would be getting the data from the database but when you are trying to look at scalability we always look at that how many times you are updating the things in the database how many times you are making the changes in the application user is making changes in the application so the user would be making changes in the application in that specific 30 minutes of time so here comes the bigger problem in dream 11 that even even that is not there in google so in google because it's a bigger application the the data the scalability is much more predicted you know that you no know, i today in the morning in this particular region i might have say between 8 to 10 let's assume between 8 to 10 in a google so people will be doing more, much more google kind of searches because people would be coming home and they would be doing much more google searches for entertainment say probably 8 to 10 for india region this assume that but from a dream 11 perspective this is variable you might have an india pakistan match for australia where your timings are different and this whole spike will happen only for 30 minutes and then after that your application is normal so when you are designing this piece of application think about the challenges that come in that you need to be counting for this 30 minutes of spike and then your application should not be built your infrastructure cannot be like this that this infrastructure is is for this 30 minutes of spike then you are spending too much of money in that particular application because right now you in that 30 minutes you might be using 100 requests but in other span of that particular day you might be having only 10 requests to your database am i making sense guys are you able to follow guys are you able to follow this that your application that is there usually would be would be looking at 10 requests then for first 30 minute will be having 100 requests so the scalability becomes a big big challenge so how to create an application how to look at the tech stack which is be able to look you know build this application with a variable scalability where i can you know use uh, make sure the scalability can i can get kind of you know button or it can become kind of a codable scalability for that let's try to understand what are the tech stack that we need to pick up now see the front end becomes easy right front end you can make it in react it can maybe angular the challenge comes in the back end and choosing the database back end and choosing the database now in the back end piece what do you want we want node js we have two options whether you want to do it for javascript or you want to look it for django or, or spring boot or that kind of thing right what do you think that what would be a better application for this node js or spring boot 
guys people are interacting what do what do you guess why why do you think is node js and why do you think that is spring boot also so just to give you an example again i just go back to little bit basics of fsd so node js a js is is a language which is a single threaded application so in javascript when you are running this node js which is a single threaded application where only one process is being executed executed by the js application and node js does some event mapping to make sure it's concurrent processes Spring Boot or a Java is basically a multi-threaded language. It supports multi-threading. It supports concurrency. So, with this particular knowledge, what exactly you should build on Node.js or Spring Boot? Okay. 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 Okay, very nice. Okay, so let's try to talk about then. And I, this is a confusing question. Let's try to talk about because the answer is yes and no. So both can be used at different stages. So guys, you guys know the concept of MVP. Everyone here in the class, can you guys anyone tell me what's what do you mean by minimum viable product? so anyone knows about what's a minimum viable product have heard the term minimum viable product you can write yes if you have heard the term mvp perfect perfect absolutely so what happens is when i'm trying to build a product so i'm build a product of a of a game application right when i'm trying to build a product i am trying to build it i am trying to build the first mvp for this what is an mvp a minimum viable product where i have all the features which is saleable which is usable not some testing beta product okay mvp is not a beta product it's not an alpha it's not a beta it's a full fledged product but it doesn't have all the features specifically it it is not a scalable thing so it is for for n number of users to use like like probably used by first 1 lakh customers right first 1 million customers then it would be once it's a success then we're going to add more feature and make it scalable so when you are trying to build the mvp obviously node js is the answer because node js i'm it's an easier application to build node js is an easier implementation because when you are building mvp the most important thing is speed how fast i can employ deploy things how fast you can build the application but when you are trying to build this application and make it scale it up to 10 million applications you know 10 million users then we need to look at and and look at some sort of a framework which is support concurrency like spring boot and obviously you know look at devops component of it which is kind of out of scope for my my this particular webinar but then you have to look at a kind of a spring boot kind of thing that's why there are most of the applications when they are in their mvp stage they would be building application back end in node but then when they are in a stable piece of it say like ola ola when it was developed it was it was the back end was typically built in node but now if you look at ola tech stack it is in spring boot because once you want that millions of users would be using it millions of requests would be coming in you'd be looking at java spring boot as your back end application or your back end framework That, that so that is why the answer is both the answers are true but in different versions of our different phases of our product life cycle now i can tell you a very interesting uh, software called similarweb.com this is a that's a portal where you can look at that what are the kind of traffic you are expecting for a specific kind of an app or a website So today, if you look at go to dream11.com or a dream11 app, you would know that if you go to similar web, you will know that what kind of DAU daily active users you are going to get, what kind of monthly active users you are getting. That will give you an idea that you know when you when you are making this scalable, what kind of users you are expecting. 
Make sense? Anyone have heard about similar web? Anyone have heard about similar web? Similar web, guys. Similarweb.com. No. Okay. So because you, when you're trying to build a product, when you're trying to build a product which is very similar to the market, you need to understand that what kind of scalability it would require. That how many monthly users it might come in, how many daily users I'm expecting. Based on that, you need to decide your tech stack and all of this. So that is why. So the similar web is a very very interesting websites, a website which is used very extensively by by people who are developing products to look at the MOU and the DAU of a and kind of project the MOU and the DAU of that particular product that they are developing. So today, if I'm going to build an e-commerce, I'm trying to build a e-commerce product for say Amazon or something like similar to Amazon. So I'll be looking at what's an Amazon MOU or DAU. What is this question? I'll I'll come to all the questions. Just give me. Just fin let me finish this thread. That it's very very important to to kind of get into that space, get into that space, and understand what is the scalability that we're looking at. Now the second problem and the second question that we have is that what is the database I need to use? Is it NoSQL or is it SQL? Any guesses, guys? What's the what's the database we should be using? Any guesses, guys? What kind of databases would be using? Somebody is saying no SQL. No SQL. Okay. Why is it that? SQL. Okay. Can you guys just write one line? If you say why no SQL, why SQL? And and if you don't have a reason, say I like SQL. That's what that can also be a reason. That I like MongoDB. That can also be a reason. So, right? Just why? Why? What kind of databases that you that you think should be used? Okay, faster than table format. Okay, okay, that's that's fair enough. Again, any any anyone anyone any justification for SQL? Okay, so I'll 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 tell you the problem statement first, and then probably again you can we can rephrase this question. Now, do you think that all of this database, like the databases that we're using, all the data can be put into one single database? If you're trying to scale the application, is it just one single database? Are we talking about? We are talking about multiple databases because they has to be multiple. Multiple databases, right? It cannot be one single database. It's because it cannot be one single request, one single database is not possible. It has to be multiple databases. Otherwise, you can't be able to scale it. Now, I'll tell you a simple problem here. Think about a a, a simple contest, right? A contest of Dream Eleven contest, which is supposed to have five lakh users, or like have those contests, like big contests, which will Which will have thirty thousand people enrollment. Have those concept like thirty thousand enrollment. The one crore is the price. Now, each and every contest, right? Here, if the databases are in separate places, that can a MongoDB support in a way that I would be pulling data into mul for multiple nodes. And giving you one contest. That's my first question. The second question is, if a user add because I am I am I am I am keep on registering for that contest, right? The availability of the contest would keep on changing, right? The value would be decreasing. The availability of the contest and the number of people would be joining. Availability of the contest would be decreasing. If the contest exists in multiple databases, how do you manage that? You got the question, guys. Got the problem statement. Everyone got the problem statement. Or should I explain it again? Guys, everybody got the problem statement. Yes. No. Okay. The problem statement is that see, you have 
when you talk about the first thing is it can all of this data cannot be into one single database right it needs to be into different databases so that everybody understand that piece now the another the, the prop the bigger problem statement is that you have in a peak time there are so many contests which are getting filled up so if your data is coming in from different different databases so say i have three databases here some of your some of your contest data are here some of your contest data are here some of your contest data are here so how do you make sure that some of this data all these three databases have been combined and come to, like i i'm showing that data in front of the browser in, in the front end how do i make sure can mongodb do it or do you think that a relational database is better for doing all of this piece just a guess i will i will answer that just a guess give me a guess okay okay basically when you are trying to okay now okay now here comes the question because there are so many transaction that is happening all of these are transactions because when i'm adding into a contest these are basically a major commits that is happening in the database major transactions that is happening in the database and there are so many different databases involved as a solution architect we always prefer a relational database because a relational database you can apply lot of acid properties like in the sense it it you can putting those logics of atomicity and consistency so that there are no wrong transaction that would can can get into a table so when there are multiple transactional level data that is happening a solution architect or the way that developers be developing they always like a relational database because there we have more control and in making sure the databases are what is we usually use the word for sanity the databases have their own sanity it's just not not every data is here well because there is always relation between whatever it's happening so i can give you what the way it's the same logic that a dream 11 happens right <clears throat> they have a table where they are creating the sometime what happens when you keep on filling up the contest they create new contests so they basically do contest number say contest for so mega contest underscore one mega contest underscore two mega contest underscore three and make sure all the user data for mega contest underscore one in in one single database so that when you are retrieving the data it can be faster so it can be only possible when you are running a relational database this kind of logic to build in in backend is only possible when you are running a relational database now where exactly a mongodb would be used the mongodb is also used when you are looking at your analytics part if you are looking at dream 11 i was just before the webinar i was going through all the dream 11 piece of it so so we say so what happens is that we have a, a kind of a you know when we look at is uh, look at a look at a analytics part of it like there are certain things that dream 11 i'm introduced like your score your you know your head to head and all of this piece all of this analytics data would be mongo where lot of transaction are not happening when when a database is where lot of updates are happening lot of transaction happening always we prefer relational databases we don't like mongo when the analytics piece is happening where system is basically updating things right lot of where that's where we like mongo because we can easily make changes in the database i can if i want to add a new pro, new new field to my profile i should be able to do it easily that's where your mongo is being used so that's what the whole structure is so that's why you're going to decide the text stack so if i go back again i will have a text stack where i'll have react or angular kind of thing i'll have another text stack where i will i would be preferably using my mvp period node js and then the spring boot or a java spring boot piece my database will be a combination of sql and no sql sql is for my transaction piece no sql is for my analytics piece right my android app would be i'll be using in flutter or react native but if you look at dream 11 i think dream 11 is still in kotlin the new version that they are trying to pull in that they they are building a flutter app i believe yes i know somebody who is working so they are building a flutter app for this uh, but right now it's still there in their in the kotlin and 
so their their iOS app is very bad. They, they are in Swift space, but uh, but if they are building a Flutter app, and if I today want to build it, I will not be using a Kotlin and uh, Swift. I'll be using a Flutter app, right? I'll be using a Flutter or React Native. This is how the whole thing would be because. If I am a, that's why again the the logic part is not something that you should be worried about. Logic part, you know, this is there's a DSA problem on how to create ranks, leaderboard, all of this. For that, you need to look at all the DSA piece of it. But from an ecosystem perspective, from a design perspective, this is how you should approach building uh, a scalable. Again, scaling is a very very important part here. A scalable gaming gamified app or a gaming fantasy gaming app. Okay, where you're looking at those peak hours manage those peak hours and also looking at you know today if i have in the morning 8 o'clock i have only like 100 user using and then all of a sudden in next half an hour this 100 number will get into 10000 this is the way you need to approach and and build this particular app there is a major component that is kind of i i have not really mentioned here is a devop piece that that when you have different nodes then how do you implement that into different you know different pods that how do you manage that you know how do you manage your machines how do you manage your server but this this whole webinar is mostly on the ecosystem and a full stack part of it so this is this is how you're going to build the application the deployment piece you need to you need to understand how the devops piece work where you're going to use the advanced technologies of kubernetes and cloud where the same backend server would be implemented into multiple kubernetes pods and different multiple machines and we can doing a node balancing of the request so that's again is not something that we can it's not, not it can be a part of the different webinar but this is what the way we are going to build a dream 11 or somebody who has decided to build a dream 11 this is the structure and this is the way they have thought about it that today if i want to build something like gmz that these are the conversations that we're going to have between the solution architect or or the lead developer and this is where you're going to build things okay this is why I'm going to stop this whole session. I'll love to take more questions here. Any questions, guys? Uh, this is a good question. Is each contest one database? No, 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 no. We need to make sure that that there are database instances that is there, right? We need to make sure you need to run a backend algorithm so that all each and every contest, the data that is for contest, there's a mapping that is happening. So in one table, you have a user ID. I'm giving you very deep implementation detail here. So one table, you have user IDs and one table, you have contest. So there is a mapping that is happening between the contest and the user IDs. So there is a table for that. So that where all of this data, this where one contest data should be part of one single table because this table is going to be there in different instances as well. So it cannot be, you need to make sure that you need to route the, the you know, the, the update queries in, in a way that the data for that specific contest should always remain in within, the, within that particular database. Okay. Any other question, guys? Okay. We can have no a question. Uh, yeah. Can Node.js handle till one lakh users? Yes, it can handle till one lakh users. But and how many have... users can Node.js be used? Yes. So this is a very vague question. So how many users... So you all look at, so the users, you should always be looking at request basis, right? So, and how many concurrent requests are you looking at? So one lakh users with not much of a concurrent request, Node.js can happily use it. So I have applications which have 80,000, 90,000 users happily using it. But it's, it's from a, but it's a scalability that is the question. If that one lakh user is going to move into 500 million requests, for a spike of 30 minutes, the answer is no. The answer is no. If that 1 lakh user is, is going to give you, say, 10 lakh requests, a span of 5 minutes, 10 minutes, the answer is yes. And also, it's it's not only the not only the framework that you're choosing, it's the way you're deploying the thing that also matters. You know, the way you're deploying, how you have used in Kubernetes, how many machines you have used. So all of these things matter. But from a framework perspective, because node, the Node.js is a, how, how usually we put it, right? Node.js is basically a single vector. So we usually give you an example. I'll give you an example that's, that's beautifully defined in Node.js and Spring Boot framework. And so think about you have gone to a restaurant, right? 
for a node js that restaurant have only one waiter so what is node js is doing it is taking an order from your table going to the chef putting your order and then going to another table getting to the chef and getting the order again and going to the chef so but it's it's a concurrent process but it's just one waiter but if it's a spring boot thing you're getting into a restaurant where there are multiple waiters because there are multiple threads so if there are in a peak hour i would love to have more waiters than a single waiter restaurant that's that probably that would answer you a lot of questions that's it is it people who are having questions on node js and thing you will do understand yes no guys single waiter multiple waiter we have one more question for back end to develop this type of application for security mm -hmm. concern which tech stack can be used like user details are saved in back end side very good question from a security perspective so security is is a is kind of a separate module that we talk about right so if you look at today a spring boot right it has you know they have their own java comes with their own security modules if you look at node node comes with their own security module now node comes with something like a passport js java comes with uh, you know java, java spring boot have their own maven injections and sql injections to have those security modules in place basically security in today's world is dependent on the cloud also that how how much your cloud is vulnerable and the tech stack you know how you are building the application on uh, and you are resisting an sql injection or a or to to there are different technologies that we talk about xsf and all if you ask me is from a security perspective is that a driving factor for me for node js as spring boot no because both the application can be made secure by different third party libraries that can be used is it a driving factor for me no because node has different libraries which is going to implement the same authentication or oauth or different secure web security concepts that that is there the same there are third party libraries for java java we can do it so it's not a consideration for that but we can implement the same level of web security that is needed for both the type of application but if you want to make a very secure application i would love like to say that a database should be uh, RDBMS. It should be a relational database. But again, as I said, but because relational database, you can put a lot of locks and everything while accessing the database. You can cannot easily update a, a relational database. But MongoDB can be, you know, no no SQL can be easily updated. Any other question, guys? For backend development. Okay. Okay, Sonia. Okay. So, uh, so this is so when you talk about so this whole webinar, right? Uh, so when you talk about our FSD program in Wired, uh, this is what we we have this all the languages, all the technologies that I have talked about uh, is kind of covered in our Hero Wired FSD program, where uh, I believe that you know you look at our front end where we want to we are going to teach React, Angular. Uh, there are there are two different tech stacks that exist. One is a modern tech stack where you're going to learn about React and Node. The other tech stack where you're going to learn about Angular and Spring Boot. Uh, we are going to learn SQL and Mongo both. And at the end of the program, we'll be learning Flutter for mobile development, along with the deployment piece of it. That when you build an application, you're going to build and you're going to deploy these things in DevOps and Kubernetes. Okay. This is the whole piece. And and you know, uh, again, as I keep on saying in most of my webinar. That if you complete this uh, our program for Hero Wired FSD, you should be able to build. You should have the skills to build this kind of apps uh, on a deployment piece of it as well, and at least some of tech stack piece of it as well, because that's exactly uh, what we what we teach and and then kind of what our curriculum is for. So that you should be able to build this kind of apps uh, all by yourself. If you complete the program, you should be able to build this kind of apps. All by yourself. The, all the tech stack that I mentioned here, all the technologies and tools that I mentioned here, are part of our Hero Wild uh, uh, FSD program. Yes, yes, Mohan, Mohan. We so what happens is usually they use socket and obviously API, 
uh, in in production application to use something called Kafka stream. So that used in Dream Eleven as well. Uh, there is Kafka stream. There are something called Spark. So the data that I push in in request and JSON that usually goes through through Kafka sometimes through Spark. But the concept remains the same. It's through a socket and an API. Are there any libraries which make fantasy app easier to develop? Uh, I, there are no libraries. You need to build it. Uh, you need to look at look at libraries. React is a and uh, JS library which is going to make your life easy when you're trying to build front end. So Express is there. We're going to make your life easy to make a back end. Spring Boot is also a framework which which reduces a lot of work that you need to do in Java. A lot of code that you need to do in Java. Um, and if you're looking at some free code that is available, I'm really not sure whether you should be using those things or not. Any other questions, guys? Very nice. I will uh, open this to Ankur if you have any questions related to job, related to career that is happening. My mom? Yeah, sure. So everyone, we have Dr. Ankur Sodi with us, who is the AVP for career services team at Hero Wired. And he will be helping you out with all your career opportunities or placement related queries. And I hope he will be the right person to answer all your doubts related to the placements or the career. Over to you, Dr. Sodi. Thanks, Mahima. Uh, thanks, Enjoy, for uh, the insightful session. I had a couple of learnings to do there as well. Uh, next time I go on Dream 11, I am sure that or uh, anyone goes on Dream 11 or um, my circle 11 or whatever, I'm pretty sure that it's your face that will come first rather than anyone else. And I hope you become the captain of all teams. So thanks, guys. Thanks for joining in. Um, I'm pretty sure that you have uh, you've had your you've, you've got a taste of what we can offer in terms of uh, quality teaching um, in by means of this one hour session uh, with, with Sanjoy. Now, I believe that everyone who takes uh, any program, uh, when, when we have done our graduation or when you, when you take a program with a company like HeroWide, everybody takes the program with an outcome in mind. And for most of the people, uh, the outcome would be a career transition or it, or it would be um, getting ahead in your own organization itself, if not a company outside, maybe uh, may, maybe in your own organization, you want to grow by learning all these skills. So this is what we do here at um, at Hero Wired. That is, we have a full fledged career services team, and uh, what we do with the learners, I will. Uh, Mehmet, do you have it? I believe you have it on the PPT. Can you bring up that PPT, please? Uh, the program PPT that you have. We have the career services. Details mentioned there, I believe. I don't have it right now. Okay, but I'll pull it up. I'm I'll pull it up. Just give sure, me a minute. Sure. Okay, so I believe you can see my screen. Maima, is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. So guys, whenever we reach out to companies with the candidature of our learners, uh, this is the philosophy that we try and follow, that our learners are not meant to be placed. They're made to, made to take organization places. I believe a right hire for any organization um, goes a long way in terms of changing the destiny of an organization. And whatever you learn, whatever you do here at Hero Wired, we, we believe that it will transform you. It will help you uh, get a, get the role that you have been aspiring for. And whichever organization you join, it is going to benefit from your candidature. So very quickly, what all do we do here? I'll not take um, a lot of time because once you join, more or less, this is the same PPD that you go through. This is the whole gamut of things that we do here at Hero Wired as far as career services is concerned. So it's not only... Um, putting your resume in front of the companies. 
we believe placement is an outcome of the effort that you put in right it should be the end result along with the domain knowledge that you acquire in the program all this is what we offer so this is at no cost add on services provided just to help you prepare for the job interviews and and to have a successful career um thing that is very close to my heart is the personalized career service personalized career coaching many other edtechs do that many education institutes do this career coaching stuff but it is one to many here it is a one to one career coaching session where you can speak your heart out you can talk about the progression of your program the way it is progressing the person would understand the career coach would understand the role you are currently in the role you are aspiring for the program you have taken and give you an individual development plan also they would help you figure out what kind of job or what kind of role is best for you at what juncture in time see i firmly believe that everyone wants a 50 lakh one cr kind of a job this program would either get you that or will put you on the path to get that maybe in near future right if you do not have any tech background right now taking this course believe you me um you will not get a 50 lakh or a 1 cr job right away but going through the program understanding those skills using those skills will put you on on that path so that's the individual development plan and the kind of career progression that you can look for is what the career coaches talk about every month rather every week we have sessions from industry experts happening on the weekends which is you will have the chros the product officers you'll have the the ctos talking to the learners and it's it's a mix every once once in every month on on a weekend it would be really focused on tech one session would be focused on data science one focused when we will have an industry hr or industry chro or someone speaking giving you the the idea of where the industry is heading so it's a mix bag um more or less one session per month is is mandatory for the learners for the program that you have chosen so anybody who comes and talks about tech a pe- a people who have taken a tech program it's a mandate that you attend that session and you hear it from the horse's mouth now uh, when sanjoy was taking you through the various um uh, various technologies that you would be taught and each one of them comes with a mini project at the end so during the program you do certain mini projects which access checkpoints and give you an idea whether you have whether you have acquired the right skill set or not right and then we have these gap analysis on employability tests which tell you if you are on the right track uh, academics i believe i am a firm believer of the fact academics take you to the interview but your skills make you clear it so are you there in terms of the skills that's what is evaluated in employability of or gap analysis tests and then anyone who is a fresher and open to internship we offer internships and we do offer um, the regular placements as well so once you are ready we take your candidature to the companies we we get um, and and then the interview process happens uh, very happy to state that um, if i talk about the top 25% batch which has been placed so we um, 100% placements anyone who has been eligible anyone who has met the criteria academically good and is doing and and is competent enough so the eligibility criteria anybody who is meeting we have got 100% placement none of the student who was eligible is left out everybody is placed till now whichever batch has, com- has completed their their course over 300 partners um i i have an academic experience and i was into placements i've been into placements for around 8 10 years and i have a I have a strong team who has good relations good connections with the industry if the learners are competent enough we are able to get them the right opportunities just to give you an idea of the kind of packages or where we are so we we guarantee you 8 to 10 opportunities now what do i mean by opportunities we will ensure that you, that you are exposed to the companies you participate in the drive process clearing it or not is absolutely dependent on you how how good you are how and how do you perform on that given day right um major major factor here is whatever historical data i have as i said anybody who is eligible anybody who meets the criteria has good attendance has good academic scores has good scores in gap analysis tests there is no one who is not placed so if you are ready to put in the hard yards there is no reason that you will not get the job that you are aspiring for 
okay um and uh, this is this is the data per se talking about the kind of offers the kind of packages we have been getting so highest offered was 1.5 cr we could not avail it the highest availed was 80 lakhs and i know it's an outlier there are there is somebody who got 80 lakhs not everybody gets 80 lakh but something that should be of interest to you is this number the average ctc hike across all programs is 55% and for fsd i believe it's more than 70% or the tech programs tech stack that we teach um the kind of pedigree of companies we have been able to bring in this is a data of last last um, six months we have around 20, 62 companies which have offered packages upward of 20 lakh rupees the highest stipend achieved for a fresher is 50000 uh, there is a company called invest where the culminating package after the internship would be um 12 lakh rupees so um getting companies is not an issue at all um sanjoy comes from industry we have a good every faculty comes from industry they have their their good their, their connects as well so the idea is if you if you take this course you put in the hard yards we help you with resume writing we help you with with having a strong linkedin profile we help you with salary negotiation tech uh, tips and uh, techniques we help you how to crack interviews in case there is a company which is asking for 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 gd or any other kind of a skill we help you with that as well so more or less three career coaching interviews three mock interviews these are mandatory you can avail more if you want but this is something which we which we think everybody needs to at least to to crack the interview so this is all what we offer in in career services if you have any questions related to that i'll be i'll be happy to answer anyone deepam raghu sagar swapne lupendra prachi anyone any question mai ma over to you sure thank you so much ankur for uh, providing us with all the details related to the career services and the placement opportunities that we provide uh, if anybody has any questions related to this entire webinar all the placement criteria or anything related to the hero wide programs the floor is now open for the questions you can put down your questions in the q and a section as well as in the chat box itself looks like we are sorted for today thank you so much ankur thank you so much sanjay for such a wonderful and informative session it was amazing to have you both here thank you so much everyone for being a lovely audience for this webinar so we will be connecting soon with another exciting topic for the webinar and we'll connect with you thank you so much everyone for joining thank Thanks you so much ankur and sanjay thanks everyone